I'm Adam Balkin, and welcome to It Ain't Rocket Science. I'm here at the 2013 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, where the biggest technology companies come out to show off their newest developments. It might just be the kind of place that you'll appear in the not-so-distant future with your designs for better living. While sampling the latest consumer comforts here at the Expo, I got to talk to some of the leading innovators in science, technology, engineering, and math. But before we get to that, let's take a look at how you are getting involved and how STEM is a part of your everyday life. This episode, we'll take a trip to the International Space Station with some students in North Carolina, learn about the science behind a green roof in New York City, talk to two meteorologists about what it takes to predict the weather, and see how some students are getting their feet wet in coastal restoration projects with the Nature Conservancy. And don't forget to join the conversation during the show. Tweet at Connect Minds to share your thoughts as we go. But first, a centuries-old game goes high-tech as this year's first robotics challenge is unveiled. In just a few short weeks, students will descend on the Jacob Javits Center behind me for just one of the regional competitions taking place around the nation. Our Shazia Khan has more. Their eyes and ears eager with anticipation. Students gathered in Manchester, New Hampshire for the annual first robotics competition kickoff. Through NASA TV's global broadcast, more than 2,500 high school teams from the East Coast to the Far East learned their mission for this year's challenge. Ultimate Ascent, the goal to have the robots throw discs and score points. I camp for a Frisbees myself, so I'm curious how to make a robot to do it. Each team gets six weeks to design and build a bot from an identical kit of parts. It's filled with motors, bolts and other building blocks. What students won't find inside? Instructions. There are very few times ever on the planet in one's lifetime that you see over 2,000 solutions to the same problem. Students and mentors here at the kickoff got a closer look at the field of play and were busy taking measurements and planning strategy. I've got the height of the pyramid, height of the to the plastic, height of the, how often there are rungs, and how big the dispensers are. Um, it should be helpful in design for the robot. First stands for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. Inventor Dean Kamen founded the organization in 1989 and continues to challenge its young participants. Not one of these students won't look you in the eye at the end when they're tired, exhausted, frustrated, and every one of them will look you in the eye and say, but I can't wait to come back next year because I got more out of it than I put into it and I put in everything I had. More than $16 million of scholarship money is also up for grabs. I'm hoping to go to engineering college or something like that. Uh, I'm hoping this is going to open up a lot of opportunities. Winners from the regionals head to St. Louis for the finals the end of April. For an 8 Rocket Science, I'm Shazia Khan. Now students participating in FIRST Robotics aren't the only ones being challenged in engineering in North Carolina. One school is incorporating robot building into the curriculum and using iPhones and iPads to kick the project up a notch. Our Lisa Sasky has more. When 12th grader Logan Ferguson heard about project-based science, a course offered at his school, he was first in line to sign up. It's probably the best class in the school. And once he was in it, he says it was even better than he thought. Yes, you For the past several weeks, these students at A.L. Brown High School have been building robots, but they're not just any robots. So the students are in a separate room and they're able to see what's going on uh, by using FaceTime with an iPhone and an iPad. Um, it was one of my um, favorite projects just because it was fun getting to like incorporate the technology with it and it's kind of like a real life video game. One they built from start to finish. Teacher Kevin Russell says the goal in all of his classes is to promote STEM education, science, technology, engineering and math. Russell says with this project they've taken it to another level. It uh, has major elements of engineering as well as the uh, science uh, components of programming for computer science. Um, it allows students a great deal of creativity. I like projects where you have to think outside of the box to get them done. Russell says that's the whole idea, and every semester it draws more students to the classroom. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Elisa Sasky. To find hands-on math and science learning opportunities in your community, 
visit connectamillionminds.com. These young engineers with a bright future ahead of them may one day be working for NASA on that long anticipated mission to Mars. And speaking of Mars, the Curiosity rover made a surprise appearance this year in Times Square for the New Year's Eve bash. NASA and Toshiba partnered together to bring a live picture from Mars to the big screens in Times Square for the 2013 New Year's Eve party. We have a great audience, a great opportunity, a global opportunity here to share, to share that knowledge and, 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 and those photos and those videos. What we're doing is everything's being transmitted via live stream from their headquarters. So all the content that's been coming in from Curiosity goes to their headquarters and then that gets uh, digitized and it just goes over the internet like any, any movie file. Curiosity rover wasn't the only one calling from space. One group of high schoolers got a live tour of the International Space Station from NASA astronauts. Our Meg Smith was there with them. Aboard the International Space Station. Welcome aboard. Astronauts Suni Williams and Kevin Ford are giving these Guilford County Schools students an out of this world experience. They just answered all of our questions, all like anything, everything you wanted to know about space and how it's like up there, what they do. I mean, I had no idea until I talked to them. Ashka Shaw is part of a student team that's working with astronauts at the International Space Station to test a science experiment on mold growth. It was about the rate of mold reproduction, and we have potato dextrose agar, and we're trying to find out how much like mold reproduces on it. The presentation sparked a career interest for students like Kyle Payton. It's a mind-blowing experience. It's really cool and interesting. Well, I'm going to look into be becoming an astronaut, maybe learn, see if that's something I'd like to do. There's so many new experiences out there like that you can have, and it's just so interesting to think about all the things that could happen. You guys are the next ones who are going to take the next big step. So uh, get psyched out there, and uh, we're looking forward to watching you guys in the future. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Meg Smith. You don't have to wait years to get up close and personal with space. During the month of February, you can enter our 321 Pledge Connect a Million Minds sweepstakes for a chance to win a trip for four to either New York City or Los Angeles, where you'll visit one of these celebrated space shuttles, Enterprise, or Endeavor. To enter, go to connectamillionminds.com and take the pledge to introduce young people in your life to hands-on science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities. Merging rap and science, we'll talk to Wu-Tang Clan rapper Jizza about his science genius rap battles and what does it take to tell the weather? We'll take a behind the scenes look at a weatherman's life coming up on It Ain't Rocket Science. Love science and technology? Tweet at Connect Minds to join the conversation. <laughs>